today I'm excited because it's one of Ted's favorite scale lengths, the seven foot piano. We're looking at the premier piano of Japan, the Shigeru Kawai SK6. We're gonna be talking about what makes it special and why it might be the best piano. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Barr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support. We love to interact with you. Ted, I'm, I'm going to say this right up front because I think it's important enough for people to try the SK line, even if you would never in a million years would consider buying one because it would be too expensive or out of your budget or you don't have room for a grand. Too or much of a dream. Just please go find a local dealer to go check these out. We have Kauai Piano Galleries around the country. We have San Antonio. There's two locations. We have Austin, Texas. We have Kansas City, Kansas. We have St. Louis in Missouri. We are opening Columbus and Cleveland in the next couple months next couple weeks weeks and uh and so there'll be quiet piano galleries there by the time this video is out and there will also be uh if you're in detroit metro area um go check out michigan pianos the quiet piano gallery up there and traverse city so lots of places where you can go and try the sk there will be a representation at all those locations of an sk um somewhere within the and line. i got to meet people from those stores last week yeah and so you were over wonderful. in california at Kauai's. you know it was kind of their educational seminar on their pianos but they spent a good amount of time on the shigeru line a lot amount of time on the shigeru line. and i think that's important because they realize hey this is a special instrument and we need to tell this story in a concise way but there's something i want to say that um because we have a couple of sk videos and i want to say this because i didn't say it in the other one mm -hmm. and this is important when they come up to teach you the, the Shigeru Kawai story and how those pianos are manufactured is a big part that has already been discussed and they don't go over. And that's pretty much how the pianos are put together at the K Kawai line mm -hmm. and then also the GX line. So when you get to the SK line, they have these other extra special steps that they do. But other than that, the foundation of the piano and everything in terms of the millennial three action, the carbon fiber and the, the carbon components that they, they put into the action, it's in all their pianos. Mm -hmm. And so that you have different types of materials in the top of the line go into the Shigeru Kawais, but a lot of these other things that, that we've talked about, the stretcher overlap bar, all of that is in the GX line as well. And so is the core foundation for bringing the beams together to that, uh, that iron joint. It's like a spoke of a wheel. Mm -hmm. All of that is in all their piano lines. No, and, and I think that's important to, to realize that they care enough about the research from the top. And we've talked about the SKEX, that EX meaning experimental piano. And everything that they pour into that, they eventually want to you know trickle down throughout their line. And they've done that really well from anywhere from the SK2 all the way up to the SKEX. Um, these different systems that they've created that uh, the way they age their soundboard, the way that the rim is constructed, all, all, those, all those components that really make these pianos special and the quality of materials that they're using and the time they're spending putting together these instruments is all at front of mind. They don't want to rush any, any procedure when they're putting this right. together. Everyone, you know, if you're having a bad day, don't work on the piano Right, today. they don't want any bad karma or mojo going into the, the mm -hmm. craftsmanship at all. And that, that's certainly understandable. And just as a little aside, I have to tell you, it was the first time out there they, they had all their products and a lot of them all over, you know, kind of set up like a campus and different rooms and buildings. But what I was fascinated with is the same thing that everyone was fascinated with that went that that attended the, the school. And it was, believe it or not, an upright piano. And I started thinking, you know, that that K800 model piano was it's just really awesome. I'm wondering if they're going to come out with a Shigeru Kawai upright piano. Wow, that'd be and pretty that, cool. that would be a good challenge to throw down to them. I think I'll get back with them about that. Yeah, you should. I'll call you should our recommend. sales rep and say, "Hey, how about a SK upright? Something to really steal, take the cake." An SK eight hundred. And as yeah, an SK eight hundred. That'd be pretty cool. That would be wonderful. And um, but talking about the 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 SK six today, and you have a special place in your heart for seven seven foot pianos. Uh, 
I, really I always do. I always make the joke, you know, why is six afraid of seven? Like, why is the six foot piano? Because seven, eight, nine. It, it, I know. No, seven, eight, but nine. the seven foot piano really, in some people's eyes, is better than a lot of nine footers. It is in mine. It always has been. Only because what I like about a nine footer is what you like when you're playing one in a in a concert hall without amplification. I mean, if it's a rock concert, you don't really need a nine foot piano other than for show. Mm -hmm. But at, because you're going to mic it or whatever. But um, in in an empty auditorium. A nine foot is there just to re-emphasize the depth of the bass and to give the whole instrument more, more volume. Mm -hmm. When you get on a seven foot piano, you're dealing with a perfectly balanced instrument right in front of you. It's got the right amount of everything. The bass doesn't outshine the mids and the, and the, the top end doesn't outring the mids or the bottom and it's a nice blend. And for the most part, on the seven, the seven foot scale piano, it just kind of matches that seven and a quarter inch octave design. Mm -hmm. And it, so it kind of like puts the math towards the same kind of numbers, I guess. But the balance is always so much. I just always thought it was, that's my preference. And we did a video recently and make sure you guys check it out. It's, it was the C6X Yamaha's uh, Conservatory 7 foot uh, versus the GX6 which is Kawhi's GX series, their Black Series, their kind of conservatory line, um, kind of apples to apples right there. And it was their seven footers, which, you know, are usually get outshined in people's eyes by the C7 and the GX7. Um, and for whatever reason, people just associate that seven with seven foot and they're really seven foot sixes. Um, but yeah, that seven foot is, it's, you know, it's the Steinway B that we talked it about is. in that it's video. It is, the magic of the scale. And, and it's really a, an, an incredible instrument. And, we you know, hopefully in this in this recording that we do here in a minute, you guys will hear that off of this SK-6. It is a magical instrument that really, I think, when you play the SKEX and you play this, the SK-6, these two are the kind of the shining spots um, through the line. Um, of course, everything throughout the line is incredible. But as far as what you're talking about, that balance, that really kind of from every key it's just, it's just it kind of speaks when you're playing a piece well it, it does and you have to another thing i always try to tell people is that the the sk pianos are it, it's an intimidating instrument and almost everyone that sits down it says almost the identical same thing they play one or two things on it. i didn't practice enough to play this that's almost because the, the instrument is that impressive from the first time anyone sits down it's like wow I don't have anything prepared for this. It takes a couple of minutes to get used to like it, it does. To get playing, and and it's and it speaks to the the. Uh, it's like driving a race car. Almost. Oh, the it's, first thing that went through my mind, I played when even when, when we got them in a few years ago. I played like Man, this thing is just way too good. It's, uh, I'm just uh, it's I, like you're used to like driving a regular car, and all of a sudden you have to like figure out how to control something yeah. that might be out of your out of your. Uh, I mean, they're beautiful, wonderful instruments, and sometimes I sit down at them and I think, ah, this is this is a hard deserved play because. I know everyone in the world wants to play one of these, but after a while you start thinking, I don't deserve to play this piano because it is really, I don't want to say it's over-engineered or anything. it's just perfect. And it, and it always, it just, it just feels so solid when you play it. It's well, a confidence builder. Well, let's take a listen to it right now. We'll try to play it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, then we'll come back and talk about some of the key features on the SK-6. And, you know, once you get up to the five, six, seven, and the EX, through the Shigeru line, there is one big difference between that and the and the uh, the two and the three and the f and uh, so we'll talk about that when we come back. But we'll talk about some of the features. Let's take a listen to it right now. The SK6, the seven foot Shigeru Kawai.
okay, Patrick, I'm going to go out on the edge. I'm going to say I heard a difference in the bridge construction on the larger piano. <laughs> it's funny that you say that, but it, it is something that does differentiate these these pianos. The, the bigger ones, they saw a need because the bass strings got that much louder. Um, they said, hey, let's look at the bridge construction. Let's see if we can get a little more brilliance out of that upper register when we do have... Uh, when we have these bigger instruments. And so everything from the 5, the 6, the 7, and the EX, those bigger instruments, the construction of the bridge is different in that upper register switches to a thing called boxwood um, instead of the maple the maple gotcha. bridge. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of those design elements they were acutely aware of. Hey, you know, we could we could get a little more pronunciation here. How could we the do that? End. Yeah, let's let's get a you know a harder wood that will that will translate better on this on this uh, register. So it is something that you can see and and sometimes hear if you if you're really paying attention to it. Well, you can tell in the sustain. Mm -hmm. I guess it just lasts longer, right? and it seems to be a little yeah, bit and it's just very very present. crystal clear. Um, and that's something that a lot of people say about the the the. SK line, it's just balanced from your bass section all the way as you move up, and then you get a lot of presence um, in those upper registers. Uh, so talk talk to me about the Millennium 3 action. We're going to just quickly go through some of these features that make this piano special. Absolutely. What makes the Shigeru Kawai pianos special is they have an extended key length. I think it's like an extra inch or an inch and a half over your standard grand, which gives you a lot more control, uh, not over just volume, but also um, Softness, not, mm -hmm. I, I meant volume, not loudness, yeah. but also softness. You can play um, faster passages, softer. And then, of course, they have um, their pedals, which I absolutely love having my feet on top of the pedals because you can feel the vibrations of this mm -hmm. instrument through the lyre, through the pedals, through your feet. And um, so this longer key works great. They also put an extended cap on top to make sure that there's no wobble, there's no flexibility, and that this thing will always be straight and precise. Uh, with a longer key button and they have the millennial three carbon fiber action and they have carbon component uh, flange which allows for this to swing up they also put stabilizers on the side here to, because a lot of times you notice that this is this is where actions crack on older pianos when they get old so they they have these piece of reinforced they call it a phen phenolic stabilizer and that is strengthening the hammer at its weakest spot where it use out into the, the it's like thinnest part of the, of the hammer. Too, yeah, yeah, it is. And, and it's the part right there where it moves. Uh, other things, they have this dual action beam that it looks like a F that letter F that fell down. And uh, they use a serrated top so that the flange won't move. They also put a rubber insuliner underneath it, cut back on noise and ensure it stays in place. And they use actually threaded machined uh, screws to go in here because a lot of times other manufacturers will put like Just, single punch ins, and yeah. then the minute you unscrew them, they don't hold as tight. And and to be said on other pianos, they'll use sandpaper here. Um, sandpaper and, instead of the and then um, felt here, right? And felt. Uh, this 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 insuliner really does cut back on the noise. There mm -hmm. there is some extra noise that 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 is generated when there's hard components uh, between there. And this is part of the reason why uh, all all of their pianos play alike. What is different is the response, and particularly mm -hmm. on the on the, um, the SK pianos because they use the top of the line materials, and so you can hear all of that uh, at play, and, and you, you can and you feel it of, when you play. And you think about how much time they put in after construction on getting these pianos into floor ready. Oh, absolutely. They, they, they go and they voice and they and they prep ready all of these pianos, but they say it's not done. They say once it gets to location, they want to do it again and again, and and, uh, and so. You get an MPA visit, their master uh, uh, piano artisans. Right. You get you get a visit when you buy an SK. You get a visit from them. You know it used to be within the first two years. I, I know it's it's kind of backed up with with the supply chain issues and with uh, um, with COVID. It was their technicians weren't able to get out, but they have I think three or four in the U.S. that are all the time on the road trying to get to people who bought SKs and and they spend four to eight hours on these pianos and they really get them in perfect condition. That's wonderful. Um, they voice it to the room, they voice it to your likings, and really kind of go the extra mile, which I, I really appreciate because it's taking care of the end user. A lot of times manufacturers will, you know, okay, we finished up at the shop, you take it from here. Right, right. And they, they really see a need to to go that above and beyond. Um, and that's really what they do with everything with the Shigeru line. It's, you think about the, the soundboard, uh, they age it at least five years. 
um, and it's all natural aging. They're not going to cut corners with a machine that cooks the top. You know, right. some manufacturers, especially in the guitar world these days, have tried to shorten the time frame. Extra atmospheres. Yeah, they, they try to shorten it, and who knows what that does to the to the to the wood over time. But uh, but they they taper their soundboard to be perfectly fit. Um, they're trying to get the perfect balance of you know strength and flexibility so that it can carry as right. much resonance and as much sound as, as possible. They're really trying to contain the energy of what you're playing. When the string strikes, the board vibrates, it hits their rim. Their rim is layered hardwoods um, and, uh, you know, it's maple and uh, and it's a mahogany on, on the... Yeah, they put a... Uh, well, yeah, they have mahogany in, on, on the inside, but they put that flamed or burled... Uh, maple. Maple Oh, on yeah, the, the bird's inside. eye maple on the inside is just a treat to look at when you're playing your piano. You just see this... It makes it look more golden. It looks... Yeah, it just... It, it's vibrant. And yeah. and uh, and same with the... Uh, um, the finish on the the, the plate. Uh, on the plate it's gorgeous it's like this sparkle copper that's in, incredible to look at so you not only see a beautiful piano but the sound is something that i would say that's more beautiful than a lot of people have ever heard out of a piano um, and consistent every single one we've seen has had that that quality what's really uh beautiful about it is and i'm going to do this later on in the video well is when you pull the action out it's kind of like a beautiful merging of space age technology meets the old world of manufacturing because when you see all of these flanges all lined up in perfection as opposed to what a wooden action looks like when every single one of those action components are not exactly the same and there's you know those straps in there and there's leather pieces and there's springs in it to know that it's all just carved wood all put together and think that for 50 years that thing's going to have to work perfectly as compared to something like this mm -hmm. which is carbon fiber composite action that's going to be the same thing in 50 years exactly yeah so they they really are looking to be you know the best instrument what if money was no issue what if we have all the time they're trying to create something that separates it the piano from other pianos and, and that's i think Kawhi has done a great job doing that with this line um if you have the uh the treat to play one Please leave comments uh, if you've played any SKs, if you owned one, um, if you've played one on a stage. These are really incredible instruments, um, and you see them more and more on these incredible events, you know, the Chopin competitions. Um, here in town, we did the Gerwitz International Competition, and the winner ended up playing on the SKEX, um, over, choosing over Steinway and uh, over Yamaha. And so just incredible, incredible instruments that, the players are, are choosing more and more. They speak for themselves. The and, pianos speak for themselves. And I've never seen it in a store, like in our store and in other stores, I haven't seen it before where a player will, will gravitate to this almost every time and, and talk about how unparalleled it is to, you know, the Steinway right next to it or the, the Yamaha right next to it. Um, and it's just, it's a testament to, to really putting emphasis on the craftsmanship of this instrument and choosing the best materials, having a game plan to control your energy on the, on the piano. Um, and so, you know, please try them because it's just a treat and uh, I'd, it'd be a miss to not, to not push yeah. people to go out and at least put your hands on one and, and, and get the treat of, of playing one. Um, really incredible instruments. This is Ted Barslew. I'm Patrick Marr. We're here in San Antonio at Alamo Music, but then please go check us out anywhere in the country. Um, again, if you're in St. Louis, Kansas City, Detroit, Traverse City, Columbus, Cleveland, Austin, we have a location. We have an SK there for you to go and try. And we look forward to seeing you and meeting you and talking pianos. That'd be great. Thanks for watching.